I greet all of you that are here with us tonight. Those who have, jo who have joined us on live stream, we have a profound appreciation for kindred spirits. We've commenced going through the Gospel of John. This will be our fourth exposition of this book. We'll be in verses 9 through 11 tonight. You probably picked up on this, but I want to mention it, that so far as Revelation is concerned, the work of God is always done in the light. Amen. <clears throat> or illumination. There is a worker in darkness, but it's, it's not the Lord. It was that way in creation, the heavens and the earth, he started out with light. And, and once the environment of light was there, they proceeded, he proceeded with the rest of creation. But first light was shined on the situation. When God called a nation unto himself, he first shined the light on them through the law. That showed spiritual status, it showed where people were, it defined sin, it was an illuminating apparatus, so to speak, in the Lord. Before the Savior began his work, he sent someone to shed light on the situation, and Jesus came and he was the light. And his work was done in, in the light. Amen. That's how he did his work. Any successful work of the Lord has to be initiated from heaven. That's the thing that you want to learn in this. Men can't initiate yeah. Amen. a work for God. They can participate in it, they can be used in it, but they can't initiate it. And as you may or may not know, there is considerable effort in the Christian community of people trying to start things. And it really hasn't worked out too well. God is the great starter, initiator. In God's great salvation, his before he saves anybody, he sheds light on their situation. And if people don't see their situation, there, there cannot be a conversion. Yeah. If there's something that pretends to be conversion, it's not, it's not conversion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God doesn't convert anybody that doesn't know what their true state is. Yeah. He begins by shining the light. The, the God that commanded the light to shine in creation commences salvation by shining into people's hearts the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. He commences with yes. light and illumination. So in Christ Jesus, before there can be spiritual maturity, a growth up into Christ in all things, the day's got to dawn right. yep. and the day star's got to rise in their heart. Mm -hmm. And light, in other words, light has to light has to happen. The eyes of their understanding must be illuminated before they can make some advance. See, why are a lot of Christians like that? It looks like they're stagnated. They may just be plum dead. Yeah. That that may be the situation. We're being very gracious in saying they may have just stagnated. But the reason they have is because they're living in the dark. Whatever their claim, they're, they're walking in the darkness. If they're stumbling, that's where they're at. They're in the dark. Because if you walk in the light, you do not stumble. Word from the king. Now, attempting to grow in spiritual darkness would be like God exercising the creation of the world in darkness. It just this isn't this isn't what God does. See, so anyone that's supposed to call God into a situation of ignorance and ask him to work in that situation 
Well, the work he does is going to be work of conviction, yeah, right. not of advance. See, the situation I think we have today is men have grown accustomed to living in the dark. Yes. Religious men, Christian people, have grown accustomed to living in the darkness. So when they, quote, go to church, they don't really expect anything to happen. Yeah. Nothing of any consequence. Mm -hmm. There may be something to get their attention, and maybe some friends there, or some nice tips picked up or something like that, but they really don't expect anything to happen that would be like a divine. Why not? They're used to the dark. As Jesus said, they love darkness mm -hmm. rather than light. That's right. So we're talking here in John now about an environment of light in which God is going to work. The mode of the kingdom, you might say, is I would not have you to be ignorant. Amen. It's like the modus operation of the kingdom of God. For a person not to know what's been revealed is always a disadvantage. As a matter of fact, it's very dangerous. If God reveals something, but you don't know it, that's, that's uh, not an enviable, enviable position to be in. Now we're going to look tonight at the first chapter, verses 9 through 11. That was the true, that was the true light which delighteth every man that cometh into the world. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Amen. Now, as you know from the beginning of his gospel account, John focuses on the Savior. That's what he focuses on. See, the law focused on the people. The law was not an apparent commentary on God. It was by indirection you learned about God. The Ten Commandments actually was the character of God in, in a textual form, but it didn't look like it was a commentary on God. So the law focused on the people. The gospel focuses on the Savior. <laughs> All right, you've got to see that because this is not what's happening in the Christian world. The focus is plainly not on the Savior. Anyone that doesn't know this, like, I don't know if prayer will help them or not, but they're in a bad state. Christendom today is focused on the people. Mm -hmm. So for that to be proper, you'd have to be preaching the law. That's right. John focuses on the Savior. Yes. The way that they have uh, turned it today is as if Jesus was like a genie in a lamp. Just there for them whenever they need to make a wish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now this has been a long time coming, understand. This has been four four or five decades mm -hmm. developing while the leaders slept. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, what has happened is the intelligentsia of the church has been sound asleep. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what the devil does when you're asleep? Yeah. That's when the tears come in yeah. while men Amen. slept. That's right. yeah. And that's the situation that we've got on our hands. The law focused on the human condition, and the prophets, the ministry of the prophets, for the most part, was raised up to stem the tide of sin. That they did prophesy of Christ, but it was a very small percentage of what they said. Yeah, that's right. If you were to count up the words, it'd be like in a 90% percentile was about against sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here and there, then there'd be a mm -hmm. succinct statement about the Savior, but there weren't many that were of any length. There was Isaiah 53 and a few passages that had some subs, but not much as compared to the sheer volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The prophets were sent to stem the tide of sin. Their attention was on the people. They would, uh, they would prophesy about what was coming. They didn't do this, but this wasn't the burden of their message. It was the, you might say it was the heart of their message, but the message was largely to the people. For the most part, they were shining the light on the human, on the condition of God's people. That's what they were doing. They were taking the light and showing what God's people were. Because that's got to be corrected before anything else can be done. That's got to be seen and corrected. That's why when you've got uh, people in the church that are bottom feeders, this is not good. You may say, well, we bring them so we can convert them. This is still not good. That's what you're out there. That's what we are. We're salt and light in the world. That's what we're supposed to be doing out there. We're supposed to be shedding light on the situation. You don't have to bring them to, quote, church to shed light in the situation. Our, that's what our lives are intended to do. Let your light so shine, isn't it? Church It's before men. That's how. So time and again, God raised up holy prophets to turn the people from their iniquities. It all seemed futile. It didn't it never really work. There might be a temporary, a temporary change, but for the most part, it seemed futile. However, there was, there was a reason for it all. He was showing that apart from the intervention of God himself, this situation of humanity could not be corrected. Even if he took a chosen people, set his love upon them, work exclusively with them, give them all the information necessary to know right and wrong, and give them threats that should move them forward and rewards and promises that would constrain them, it didn't correct the situation. But see, is one thing to say that is another thing for it to be confirmed or proved. Yes. So that was confirmed in Israel. We don't need to talk about this anymore. That's right. Amen. There doesn't need to be one more word yeah. said about can man do it or does God do it. Or, there doesn't have to be one more word said about it yeah. because God took a special people and he showed us. Yes. Amen. This cannot be done by human power and wisdom. Yes. And it does have to be done. Yes. See, he didn't, uh, he didn't give Abraham and Sarah a son until they knew they couldn't do it themselves. He, he, didn't, he didn't have Noah build an ark until it was obvious you're going to have to have one. He didn't send a savior until it was obvious we needed one. This is how God works, see. So if, you, if a person adopts a form of religion, powerless religion, which never points out, or as they say, is never negative, whatever that means. I'd hate to have a battery that didn't have a negative post. Would it work? Well, neither does it work in the spirit. Some people don't like any negativity at all. Well, there shouldn't be negativity unless there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason for negativity. Yes. Excuse me. When we have this confirmed, though, that we can't fix that. We we're, we can't. We're helpless in our in and of ourselves to change our nature. That's that's when we're in a position to submit to the work. That's right. As long as men have that, that's that, right. Have that hint that there's some way they can fix it. They won't submit to another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, there's. There's a the kind of people that don't believe anything needs to be fixed. See, there's that There's that kind of people. Man's just an end of himself. Then there's the people that know something needs to be done, but we can do it. There's that kind of... Then there's the illuminated people that says, God's going to have to do this. And he's not going to do it until we inquire. Yes, amen. Good. Yeah, in Noah's case, Noah was the one that had to be absolutely 
convinced that there was a flood coming. <laughs> he was the one that was going to be building the ark. But he he was persuaded. We yeah. know that oh, because yeah. he for 120 years he built an ark. Yeah, and it floated. And you can't get any more persuaded than yeah. that. The acid yeah. test is: Will your boat float? That's that's the acid test. Will it float? That's the yeah. test. Will you hold up under trial? Yeah. That's how you got to see it yeah, today, amen. you know. Right. Will it float? He made sure he daubed it within and without yes. with mortar because he knew, eh? Yeah. So you, take, you take great care in building the ark when you know what's coming. That's right. You great, take great care in how you live your life and how you, when you know what's coming. Amen. Right. Take great care in it. Yes. Now, Yes? Almost yeah, <laughs> that's uh -huh. right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Just take what's necessary. Now our text says that was the true light. That. That's referring to a person. We'd say whom. We'd say that. He was the true light. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the one who shined in the darkness. It, that's a true, that's the true light. Now, this word true is, uh, the meaning of it is interesting enough, I want to pursue it a little bit, the true light. That was a true light. That's the light. He was in the world, in the world made by the world to him not. He was the light. That's, that's the that, the yeah. person he's talking about. What's true? Here's the definition of the word true. As it's, as it's used here, that which was not was not only the name and resemblance, but the real nature corresponding to the name. Uh, yeah, amen. Yeah. In every respect, corresponding to the idea signified by the name. Real, true, genuine, opposite of what's fictitious, counterfeit, imaginary, simulated, or pretended. It contrasts realities with their semblances opposite of what is imperfect, defective, frail, and uncertain. That's what true. All right, let's examine this from the standpoint of Christ. The real nature corresponds to the name. The Son of God is not simply called the light. He is the light. If you want to know whether Jesus is among us or not, is anything being made known? Yes. That, Amen. that Amen. Right. tells the story. Uh -huh. yes. yeah. Jesus Christ is light, mm -hmm. the yeah. true light. Amen. He can't be present and people not see something right. unless they're blind. Uh -huh. yes. True light. That's his nature. In God's kingdom, nothing carries the name mm -hmm. or identity that does not properly describe that entity or person. Mm -hmm. If a name is given to something, that signifies the character of that thing or person. That's how God works. That's why he renamed certain He renamed them. Because yeah. he changed the person, he renamed them. Yeah. See, there are theoretic... Christ's. Yeah. There are. They can't save. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They can't gender a new birth. That's right. They can't deliver. Mm -hmm. They can't regenerate. They can't bring a person to glory. That's why a lot of people aren't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why. The Christ that they, it's not the real Christ. Yeah. We know it's not because what the real Christ does isn't being done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. People got to, uh, this has some alarming implications. I admit that. Mm -hmm. But people have to think this thing out. If the effects that Jesus causes aren't present, mm -hmm. then only one of two conditions are possible. Either Jesus isn't there, or the people don't know it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what other conclusions you could. And Jesus is going to do it without people knowing. He's not going to regenerate people and leave them not, not knowing what happened. Yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Jesus always uses his body to express himself. That's right. So this is why you already mentioned this. This is why it's so critical that when Christ illuminates something or shows you something in the assembly, you say it. Because that will spark something else in somebody else. And yeah. it, and so it, the evidence will be there that he's here. Are you, I know you must be aware of this, that there are a lot of Christian people that do not, that they have never been persuaded that Jesus really does something. That he really does something in the person. He does something. The person is really changed. They don't talk about it, it happens. They're really born again. They really have a new heart. They really have new desires. They really have new aspirations. That's a real Jesus does that. Amen. Amen. A fake Jesus doesn't do it. Uh -huh. Most of us probably had experience with fake, uh -huh. That's right. fake Jesuses that didn't, they didn't. You can look at a person that's in Christ and see a connection between them and Christ. Yeah. It won't be perfect. I understand that. Yeah. But there'll be enough there to know something happened yeah. to that person. So the real nature, true light, we're talking about true light. Mm -hmm. In true light, the real nature of light is found in the yeah. one called light. Amen. In every respect corresponding to the name. So whatever the name is, if, it's, if the name is true, then everything connected with that name is found in the person that wears that name. There's nothing about Jesus that fails to illuminate or make clear or reveal. Now, from time to time, this so happened in a person that's a novice, and so we, we, we must be gentle with this, with people like this. <coughs> They'll, it'll seem too hard for them to understand. I guess so. There's some pretty profound things. I mean, it, we should expect we should expect this to happen. We're not talking about Guppy's reader. We're talking about things that even angels want to look into. So it, it shouldn't surprise us that some of this is difficult to understand. But it's not impossible to understand. Because what Jesus is the light, he can help you, yes. even make you yeah. understand. Yeah. He can do it in a moment of time. Uh -huh. Here's Cleopas and his friend, sit, friend sitting there. They don't have the faintest idea what's just happened with the crucifixion of their Lord. And in a moment of time, Jesus opens their eyes. Oh. He can do that. All of a sudden, you've been staring at it for a long time. All of a sudden, what caused that? The light caused that. Amen. The person who's the light. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus, he caused that. Amen. The absence of things like this is means the absence of Christ. Yes. Amen. That's what it means. There's no such thing as a Christ, a real Christ, mm -hmm. who does not illuminate. You stick with him. Stick with him. Stay with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you stay with Jesus and you don't run off someplace, mm -hmm. eventually you'll understand. Amen. That's how it works. That's what he does. The disciples were with him for three years and they still, at the end of the three years, they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As soon as he got back to heaven, yeah. Yeah. sin was atoned for. Yeah. He poured out the Holy Spirit in a single day. All of a sudden, the whole thing <laughs> opened up. Why? Because Jesus really is the light. Amen. He really is. He's true and genuine, not uh, spurious. That's why on Judgment Day, all eyes will see him. That's right. And they're, yeah, they're going to see, see everything the, about him. And, and at once, when they see him as he is, everything else will appear as it is. Amen. That's the way it's going to work that when Jesus got back and he sent the Holy Spirit, which proves that light on the outside is not as effective as light on yeah. the inside. It See, any work has, any legitimate work has to be initiated from heaven Amen. by deity. That's where it has to start. It has to start there. Come here. Yeah. Up there is genuine. Then something that's the opposite of what's fictitious. 
or counterfeit or imaginary. See, things that are fictitious are just imaginations. <laughs> they're, not, they're not even real. A counterfeit is something that's real, but it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. It's counterfeit. Something that's simulated or pretended is it's, it's not real. It's just acted out on stage. Uh -huh. I think this is why some churches look like a stage. They look yeah. like a theater. Because uh -huh. yeah. there's a whole bunch of acting that's going on. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of acting. Mm -hmm. But true light doesn't just act. Yeah. It's not a stage play. That's not what it is. Let's be clear about this. There is such a thing as another Jesus. In 2 Corinthians 11, 4. There is such a thing as false, a false Christ. That's a Christ that's even spelled with a capital C, but it's not really, not really Christ. In such a case, the person or people have believed if whoever accepted that Christ have believed in vain. Amen. Right? Amen. However devoted they are, yeah. however devoted they are to this false Christ, mm -hmm. this erroneous idea, mm -hmm. however devoted they are to it, how much of money they gave to it, or, mm -hmm. it's in vain. Because it that Christ will not produce mm -hmm. what God is producing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The things that you're that you're saying here, they're true. But I kept uh, thinking back on my experience. And I would say a lot of the doctrine that was, what was preached was right doctrine. Mm -hmm. Not all of it, but a lot of it was. Mm -hmm. But there was a distance. I remember when I read the scripture myself, and you read about... The, the things that the people who believed God did, it's like you sense that that they had something that that wasn't present in the assembly. Hmm. Uh, and we were not encouraged. In fact, we were discouraged in many ways of being able to talk about these things and inquire after them mm -hmm. and to seek an understanding. You just, you had the form of the words, mm -hmm. you and you just, you know, you say amen to, to what it said, but you remain, you couldn't really own it for yourself. Uh -huh. It was like, these things were for those people, mm -hmm. because yeah. God was doing something with them. We just have to agree with what it says, and let the preacher and the elders do the talking, and you keep your mouth shut, and sit there and then go home and make sure you don't do bad stuff. That was the extent of the religion. I, I think I think this could be explained this way, that there was a grain of truth that was declared. I was in this, I experienced the same thing. There was a grain of truth, it was mixed voices. Yeah. Yes. It was mixed voices. So, so your heart responded to the real thing you heard, which was fragmentary. It wasn't, there wasn't much to it, but it, it doesn't take like a bushel load of truth. <laughs> so you got a, you got a whole, something was said like Jesus is the son of God, but whoever, that's the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you got hold of that. Then there was some other mixed seed yeah. Yeah. in there that they couldn't, it couldn't mingle with the, the t it was like doctrine is like people, tares and wheat. Yeah. Some doctrine is like tares and wheat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, it, it was. Uh, it was. It was not. It was not held like you. What you said, Jesus is the Son of God. You were never encouraged to think about the implications no, of Him exactly. being the Son of God. Yeah, exactly. You didn't really know what a Son of God did. Mm -hmm. You didn't know what the extent of His administration mm -hmm. is. You didn't know yeah. really much about his care for you and what the church was because of him, any mm -hmm. of those things. None of that was, was ever really uh, really preached on or opened Expounded, up yeah. or, or even, even talked about. Just 
Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Okay, next point. Yeah, yeah this, uh, you, you've learned this, I'm, I'm sure, but it's the implication of the truth that gives it its power. It's, it's like it's what's in the bucket. See, the truth is the bucket, but see, it's what's in the, it's what the, when you're drinking out of the bucket, that's, that's the thing. The implication is if he's a son of God, then, and there's a lot of other conclusions that you come to, and that's the thing that gives the truth its power. If you just take Jesus as a son of God, you just stop. You just stop there. Then men, you'll be open for other men to make other contributions. But yeah, well, that's true. But I mean, there's this other thing we got to solve ourselves, and it's, it's the truth. The truth has implications or leads to certain conclusions. If Jesus is the Son of God, that will lead you to certain conclusions, and God helps you. To, help to if this is true then I'd better not be listening to anybody else about this thing of salvation. Yeah, amen. If this is true, mm -hmm. then I better be following him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If this is true, I better hear him who's speaking. That's yeah. the implication of it, see. Yeah. But, the, but the average person subjected to what they call Christianity doesn't, doesn't think this way. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's one of the rules of any person in Christ is to help people to th think in that way. Yeah. Why do you call me Lord mm -hmm. and you don't do what I say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's an implication, see? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, it's, how, do you, how do you answer a question like that? You think there's a satisfactory answer to that? realize that just a little bit of darkness will neutralize the light. That's right. it, it'll make it ineffective or not come to the, the completeness or provide for you yeah. the edification that's necessary to grow. Here's how the truth is. It, the truth is like a light that's working. It, when it comes up against darkness, it, yeah, it, right. it stops. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus shined into the darkness, but the darkness didn't comprehend it. That's right. Now, the, our text says that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The reading is a little bit clumsy there. But the idea is this. There was the true light which coming into the world lightens every man. See, that's, that's the sense of the... He doesn't lighten every man is born. That's not what it may be what it sounds like. Well, I used to think that's what it meant, but that's not what he's saying. He's saying the light that lightens everybody was coming into the world. The light that lighted every man that comes into the world. Now let's let's pursue that just a little more. Only, the only source, source of light. Yeah. There isn't any other light. Yeah. If you don't listen to Jesus, you won't understand anything. That's right. Amen. But mm -hmm. the point of making here, he was coming into the world. Yeah. See, that's yeah. the point. Mm -hmm. He was coming into the world. No light in the world. It had to come from another yeah. place. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. It was necessary for the word to become flesh so he could die. That's true. Well, it's more than true. It's <laughs> central. But there's some things that could not be shown until he came into the world. Amen. The man Christ Jesus, we had to have that man Christ Jesus before this light could penetrate. Amen. It was too high otherwise. It was too high. Now it's true that the divine light was sort of dimmed when Jesus took the form of a man. We know that's the case because of the transfiguration, see? Yeah. At the transfiguration, right. the glory came out, which means it was, it was subdued yes. by his humanness. It's like a veil over the light. So it could shine, but not as brightly as it needed to shine if you were going to be transformed. Yeah. Right. Amen. Nobody was transformed when Jesus walked among men. Uh, you know, everybody yeah. sees that. Yeah. You couldn't be transformed by seeing the humanity of Jesus. Amen. It was right. veiled. Uh -huh. But the light that lights every man 
but he enlightens them from heaven, right. was coming into the world, coming into our domain, introducing us, so to speak, to the light. <coughs> Once Jesus went back to heaven, had put away sin, went back to heaven, sat enthroned, now he could send the Holy Spirit who would shed light on what he said when he was in the world. Amen. That's what he told his disciples. The Holy Spirit, when he has come, will bring to your remembrance all things that I said. See, he would take what Jesus said and, and open it up. But Jesus had to first come here to die, and so you get a visible representation of the light that no man really saw the truth of it until he went back to heaven. Then they kind of put it together. Yeah, yeah. So he was in the world, and our text continues, he was in the world, <coughs> and the world was made by him, but the world knew him not. Now he's not talking about nature. Mm -hmm. Nature knew who he was, yeah. demonstrated quite That's frequently, right. yeah. but the people in the world, see uh -huh. God made the world to be inhabited. Yeah. The scripture reminds us. And now he was, uh, he's in the world. Several of the versions confuse this text. Some say light was in the world. See, that's what we're talking about. Light was in the world. Others say he came into the world. Another says the word was in the world. And still another says the word was already in the world. But that just... That just confuses the whole thing. This was He's not talking about the Word came into the world. He did, but in another form. It's the light that came in. The light has to do with his humanity when it comes to salvation. The light emanates from the man, Christ Jesus. I, the one standing here, I am the light of the world. Jesus was light all, all along. He was light. Uh -huh. yeah. But he didn't illuminate men yeah. in, then. Mm -hmm. He does now that he's taken the form, human yeah. form. Yeah. He was in the world. See, he's in the world as an illuminator and a clarifier. Mm -hmm. That's what he was. But the world didn't see it. Why not? Because sin was blocking it. Yeah, that's right. Darkness covered the face of the deep. And didn't see it. Having humbled himself so he could be seen. Yeah. Nobody could see him otherwise. So he humbled himself and took on the form of a servant. People could see him. Now the fact of him being in the world is not talking about his birth. When he came into the world, that's not talking about his birth. Yeah, that's right. Although it, it did involve him coming into the world. Yeah. It's his ministry. Yes, amen. When he began his ministry, yes. that's when his life, nobody had any idea before that. That's right. They just thought it was another one of Mary and Joseph's sons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But when his ministry started, then's when the light began to shine Amen. and to glow. And it's no accident that it was linked to the dove coming down. That's right. And making mm -hmm. that connection for us that the Holy Spirit the same is for us. When the Holy Spirit moves in, now you start understanding this yeah. illumination. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Now the world is made by him. He lieth every man that cometh in the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. Mm -hmm. So this seems to me to be the most likely place he'd be recognized. Yes. Yes. You know, if an architect come to a building he built, he'd be more apt to be recognized there. Uh -huh. See, but he, he wasn't recognized. He was in the world. The world was made by him. And that fact is emphasized repeatedly throughout Scripture. Now, this is something no evolutionist will ever admit. Not even a theistic evolutionist. No evolutionist will ever admit that he made the world. No evolutionary book ever says that. No Christian evolutionist. That's right. That's right. See, because evolution mm -hmm. accents the process, yeah. but God accents the Creator. Amen. And there is a big difference. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a big difference. Some Christians want us to live with this thing, evolution, mm -hmm. 
tells that's how God made the world by evolution. Well, that glorifies the process. Yeah. Yeah. God glorifies the creator. Yeah. It also glorifies the discoverer of the process. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right, too. Yeah. <laughs> Make a pretty handsome living for him. Yeah. Well, the process is um, contrary that's right. to the, I mean, the, the process that they declare is actually contrary that's right. to mm -hmm. the nature of God. So it's the whole man. thing is corrupt from yeah. head to toe. Yeah. It's an imaginary it to process. Because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. the, the whole thing is trash. See, when you don't actually, if a person doesn't admit and acknowledge that Jesus is the creator, he has no alternative but to invent something yes. to account for the world. Yes. Right. You're going to have to invent something, but it's, it's, it's going to be false. The world is made by him. While he was in the world, the fact that all creation was subject to him, that was established several times. That it wasn't, it, the world wasn't the, was, it wasn't the inanimate world. That wasn't them. When he was in the world, there were several miraculous catches of fish. Yeah. Yeah. It was nature. The world was created. World was subject to him. He stilled the tempest. See? Mm -hmm. Nature was subject to him. He quieted the waves, raging sea. There was a turning of water into wine. Mm -hmm. That text there is John two nine. The summoning of a fish with a coin in its mouth. That fish just. The multiplication of five loaves and two fishes, the raising of the dead. See, all those are demonstrations that the created world knew who this was. They knew who this was. When Jesus said to that fig tree, don't bear any fruit anymore, that fig tree knew it's, the jig was up. Well, when he said, peace be still to the wind. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Still the tempest. Yeah, Brother Gibbon, you said something at the men's meeting. That's pretty profound. It said, nature found a man that they could obey in Christ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty good. <laughs> world knew him not. Now, the, some other versions, they help us. Uh, what, what does it mean? It said, didn't know him. Didn't recognize him. Had no knowledge of him. No one knew him, yet the world didn't notice. Paul affirms the Corinthians, the world by wisdom knew not God. Didn't. That's precisely why preaching became the appointed means of enabling men to receive Christ. Through the foolishness of preaching. You you never come to Christ by observation. I'm sorry, it's not it's not how it happens. To the foolishness of preaching or declaration. As someone whom God has shown Jesus who Jesus is, declaring it. Yeah. This is why people do not believe on Christ because they don't recognize him. Yeah. Did they hear him preach, read about him in the Bible, think about him in songs? But they don't believe in him or trust in him because they don't see who he is. Yes. That's why. That's why it's why people profess they know God but deny him in their works. It's because they don't recognize Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't know who he is. Amen. This is the reason for all slothfulness, indolence, indifference, unfaithfulness, departures from the faith. It all happens because they do not know Christ. Amen. Yes, Justin. At the last day, oh, didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't, and we did all this, and, and he said, "Depart from me, I knew you not." Yeah, uh -huh. they didn't know him. That's right. Yeah. Amen. It was just a stage play. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. That's all it was. All factions, all false doctrines, all aberrant teachings are the direct result of not knowing or recognizing Christ. Yes. That's what they're the result of. All divisions. That's why they're there. Yeah. People didn't recognize Christ. Now, if knowing God and Jesus Christ is eternal life, uh -huh. if that's what it is, as the scripture affirms in John 17, 3, 1 John 5, 20, uh -huh. 
then not knowing God is the epitome of death. Yeah, yeah. That defines death. Yes. Death is God counts death. Death is not knowing God. Amen. Being dead in trespasses and sins. Yes. Hmm. Note that this failure to know Christ took place after God had extended himself to make himself and his Christ known. Yeah. It was after extensive yes. revelation. Hmm? That alone proves the depravity of man. Amen. We don't have to talk about yeah, right. the depravity of man. Uh -huh. How sinful is he? How far is he? We don't have to even talk about it That's right. because the world is made by him. He demonstrated with incontrovertible evidence who he was, and yet the world didn't believe. That's right. They didn't receive him. Why not? Because of their moral and spiritual condition. That that's not, it's, it gets worse than that. Wow. He came unto his own, yeah. and his own received him not. See now, John is providing a context mm -hmm. within which the Son of God is to be perceived. Mm -hmm. His own of the Jews, it's his nation, right. his people, the people God chose. He came to them. He came to them. Uh -huh. That's who he came to. He came to them. The real identity of Jesus cannot be known to the wisdom of men, even religious men. If an attempt is made within the framework of worldly wisdom to understand and know God and to do the will of God and understand the scriptures, it, it, it will not allow this aspect of truth to be seen. It will not allow a person to know Christ. After all that's said and done they will still not be able to know Christ. He came unto his own. <laughs> now, in order to show the extent of the effect of sin upon mankind, he takes out a people that he has selected out of the human race, the Jews. He set his love upon them. He dealt exclusively with them. He gave them a law that defined right and wrong. They're the only people he delivered and saved and guided. And, <laughs> and after all, for 1,500 years, that ought to be enough time to yeah. learn the lesson. 1,500 years. These are the Israelites, and this is what's said of them, what Paul said of them, to whom pertained or belonged the adoption, yeah. the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Just the people gave the law to, uh -huh. through which comes the knowledge of sin. It's to this people that a lineage leading up to Jesus was developed. All the promises were given to them. Yeah, that's right. yeah. All of them. Uh -huh. Promises of the coming Messiah were exclusively theirs. John the Baptist was sent to them. He wasn't, John the Baptist wasn't sent to the Gentiles. That's he was right. sent to the Jews. So if ever a people, if ever a people should have recognized Jesus, it should have been this people. Amen. Amen. For 1,500 years, he focused his attention on them. He himself, to show the extensiveness of his deities with his people, he said through Isaiah, what could I have been done more to my vineyard? that I have not done in it. Wherefore then I looked that I should bring forth grapes, yet brought forth wild grapes. Is there something God didn't do? Hey, God throws out the question. He yeah, right. yeah, what more could I have done? Well, nobody's come up with an answer. That's right. He couldn't have done any more. Why then did they yield wild grapes? I expected something from this people because of all my investment in them. I expected something from them. And here I come here and I got a bunch of wild grapes. Yeah. Why? How do you answer a question like that? <clears throat> How much has God invested in you? That's your business. Now, this isn't my business. This is your business. Amen. How much has God invested in you? And what, have, what has been the return? Like, what have you returned? You think God is not interested in this? 
He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Amen. Jesus has put a lot into the church, let yes. me tell you. Amen. Uh -huh. And he expects yes. better stuff than he's getting. Yeah. Amen. And most of us could say, I think I could do better. Amen. You know, I think I think we could both, most of everybody could say that. The promises of a coming Savior were all given to them, weren't given to anybody else. Nobody went down to Egypt and told them a Messiah was coming, yeah. or to Mesopotamia, or, yeah. or to Italy. Nobody went over there, to Arabia, uh -huh. told them there's a Messiah coming. Right? That's what's exclusively to the Jews. He came into his own, and his own received him not. God's revelation to Israel had, had been precise now. The prophets have spoken with clarity, yet when Jesus came, he's not what they wanted. Yeah. Even though God hewed them by the prophets, led them to the wilderness, guided them and delivered heathen nations into their hands. God himself said to them through Moses, What nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Yeah. Well, the answer is there wasn't any other nation. That's right. Amen. But he said, they received him not. Don't you see if ever there was a people that should have received Christ, it should have been the Jews? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What does that tell you? Well, it tells you God can choose the people, deliver them, lead them, love them, bless them, teach them, and overthrow their enemies, and yet no change occur in them. Yeah. Uh -huh. so I don't, that doesn't sound right. Well, there you are. You have it in Israel. What do you think he did with it? He did all that with them. The people have to be changed. Amen. And they can't be changed by God heaping blessings on them. Amen. Otherwise, they'd have been changed. That's right. Amen. It's a great truth to see. Mm -hmm. None of those will result in illumination. Because I chose you, I loved you above every other people. Mm -hmm. I delivered you. I guided you. I fed you. Yeah. Taught you. Delivered nations in, over into your hands. Raised your dead. When the Lord came, look what he did. Yeah. He went about doing good, healing all that were possessed of the devil, healed their sick, healed the demon possessed, drove Satan out, fed the hungry. Nobody was born again. Yeah. All that activity, nobody was regenerated. All that activity, the disciples still didn't know up from down until Jesus went back to heaven. Yeah. They'd see Jesus kill the sea and say, what manner of man is this? See, they couldn't. You're not changed by God doing something for you. That's not what changes you. Yeah. <laughs> it's when God does something in you. Yeah, amen. Amen. <laughs> That's when the change That's right. happens. <laughs> The presence of God manifest in the flesh. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. Or God among us. Dwelling among us. Going about doing good. He can heal the sick and feed the country and raise the dead. Feed the hungry, raise the dead. Yet they can join their leaders and say, we will not have this man to reign over us. After all that. In the darkness, how great. How great. See, Jesus said about John the Baptist, they were willing to rejoice in him for a season. Yeah, right. Pretty soon they forgot uh -huh. all about that mighty prophet. Yeah. So John is showing us that if men are going to be saved, it's going to take more than information. Amen. Amen. Yes. It's going to take more than some guidelines uh -huh. on how to live. It's going to take more than exposure uh -huh. to the mighty works of God. 
Eating miraculous bread won't change them. A just and holy law won't change them. If there's going to be any salvation, God's going to have to be the author of it. Amen. And Jesus is going to have to carry it out. And believe me, he can. Yeah. Now the focus is not on what we ought to do. Now it's whom, on whom do we believe. Amen. Yeah. That's the issue now. He came unto his own, his own received him not. He went back to heaven, and now people are receiving him. Amen. Not because they got smarter, but because the power is located there. And there's now God has removed the obstacle. Sin has been taken uh -huh. out of the way. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit can come, Amen. do the work, and he calls upon men to believe. You believe. Yeah. Uh -huh. You believe in the Son. Believe the record God has given of the Son, and you will experience the power. Yeah, amen. Yes. Well, what a message we have. Uh, amen. We have a... About his own did not receive him. just affirms the Lord's statement. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Yeah. That's right. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. That's right. Some of them were really his in spirit. Most of them were his only in flesh. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that remnant was there. So they were yeah. Just a bar. We've made mention of this before, but we see two examples with Moses and Jesus with the light. And Moses' countenance shined. That's right. But it was because of the glory that he beheld outwardly. And we know that that faded. He could remove his veil after a while. And people wouldn't have any yeah. problem looking on him. But remember when Jesus was transfigured, we could say transformed, the light was within, shining outward. Yeah. And that's what... That's what it is. That's the shadow of what he's doing in his people now. That's right. It's within, shining out. Yeah. And he wasn't glowing when he came down the mountain. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. The glow went away. Yeah. Because the more you see Christ after the flesh, the less the glow. That's right. Amen. Yeah, but I can see more clearly now how the, the light had to come. Yeah. Jesus had to come as a man for the Spirit to be able to come and do a work. Right. Yeah. He needed that testimony. Right. Yes. I, I was thinking, I was trying to figure out a way to say this, but mm -hmm. you know, that he removed sin, he defeated Satan and everything, but this is really, I mean, it was for us, but this was really for God to be able that's to right. come and do something. That's yeah. right. And that, but that testimony now, yeah. that's what thats what the Spirit was going to be able to work. Yeah. The See, light had come. Jesus right. said a lot and uh -huh. did a lot when he was here, yeah. but it wasn't clear mm -hmm. when he went back to heaven. See, yeah. the Spirit had something to work. Amen. Amen. Something Amen. to work with here. Yeah, and now you that can. Also, go ahead. That also sheds more light on what the song said that uh -huh. light is sown for the righteous. That's, That's right. Like what Jesus yeah. was yeah. doing when he was in the earth. That's so right. Amen. And the light and the spirit was going to bring yeah. it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, you got, yeah, that's why you got 12 apostles. You got 12 men that, that, that testify of this light. So it, it makes perfect sense that it would be the foundation, a foundation. Yep. Yeah. And, Amen. And it, 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 it's like Brother Tony said, and you said already, that, that, that this, this reading of this, this really clarifies it a lot more, that, it, that, that he was, this, this light was coming into the world. That's right. That makes the text, well, this read a lot more clearly. Now, this is the way it works with you, too. Before something's opened up to you, you've got to first be exposed to it. You will not receive an illumination uh -huh. of something you never heard. Yeah, that's right. Very good. Uh -huh. Will not. So, so now, now you see how serious it is if the word is not preached. See, yes, see yes. How, you must see how serious that is. Then there's nothing really to illuminate. Amen. That's right. Yes, but you know, often we'll talk about a person has to come into the kingdom of God really to be able to understand the mm -hmm. things. But really, what's going on there is a matter of light. Uh -huh. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's a matter of life is what uh -huh. it is. I, you know, uh, we, we, we understand they need to be in the kingdom so uh -huh. things become clear to them. But it's really coming out of that darkness and having the light shine on you. Know? Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's how Saul's converted a light from heaven shown on him. Amen. Yes, Brother Gene. Your comments earlier about the implications of who Jesus is. Mm. Seeing those implications of what we we'll remember that the demons confessed who he was. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they, they knew. knew they he knew. said, Be quiet. Yeah. yeah. Don't <laughs> them, be quiet. <laughs> Don't tell. He didn't want that testimony. That's from right. Them. No. Holy Ghost. 
Yes. I'm glad you uh, mentioned uh, the world was made by him, and then you uh, mentioned uh, evolution emphasizes a process uh -huh. of how the world was formed, but God of heaven emphasizes the creator. Yes, sir. And we can see that in, um, at, least, at least today we can, in um, how a person is saved. If man has a way, there's a process to get to heaven. Oh, yeah, that's, uh -huh. right. that's right. God, of course, right. is going to have his way. He hey. just speaks, come forth, and speaks life into the person. Amen. Yeah, no Amen. <laughs> Such as words. Amen. Yeah. There's a process, but it's not a human process. Yeah, exactly. There's yeah. a process. It's a spirit divine. The soul. That's spirit right. Spirit. Amen. That's one process. That's one but it's all of God. Amen. Amen. Anyone else here? All right, we'll have a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, how we thank Thee for this wonderful gospel, yes. for the depth of it, the profundity of it, Evermore, give us this bread, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.